Right, Teleodia champs, and today we're going to be talking about the NVIDIA 3000 series in laptops, and yes, you'll hear announcement very soon, but we're going to talk about it right now. I'm going to talk to you about the details of this GPU. We're going to find out how much faster they are than the last generation GPUs, and I'm going to tell you why you might not want to buy these, and why you might not want to wait, and why you might want to wait for these 3000 series NVIDIA GPUs in laptops. So, first of all, for details. We've seen the 3000 series on desktops. However, these are not supposed to be exactly the same as the desktops. Now, this was leaked by WCTF Tech, and I haven't signed any NDAs, and most of this stuff is common knowledge out there if you know where to look. So for the first time, these are not supposed to be exactly the same as the desktops, meaning the CUDA core count is not the same as the desktop variant. Now, I actually done a video reducing the wattage of an RX 3080 just to see how it performed at the wattage a laptop would use, and it wasn't pretty, let me tell you now. It performed like a dog actually, and it actually took nearly 200 watts to make it perform anywhere near what you would expect, and it was around 18% faster than sort of the equivalent RTX 2080 in a laptop, which was 200 watts by the way. So for the first time in, you know, the last few generations, the laptops were always slower, but the difference between the laptops and the desktops is supposed to be a lot more now. 20% less CUDA cores. So we'll see what happens there. Now for performance, these are metrics that are already out there. A vendor has already said how much faster they are. It's on the net. You can have a look. Now 30% was the figure. That was an average. It's 30% faster. And this was an RTX 3080 versus a 2080. 30% faster on average. It's amazing how it's a round number there. But um, this is why my channel exists. You know, independent channels exist. We're going to test that out. I honestly believe that figure, but there's something important to consider. There is a feature with these new 3000 series GPUs that if you use an Intel CPU, you can get a boost of up to 5 to 10%. So what happens is an Intel CPU can actually access the GPU memory. So the same sort of thing like when you have an AMD CPU and GPU, you can get sort of extra performance. The same sort of thing with Intel and NVIDIA, right? That's supposed to be 5 to 10%. Now, does that mean 5 to 10% on top of the 30%? Or does that 30% include that sort of 5 to 10%? We really will have to look into the fine print there. Also, does that mean 30% faster in ray tracing? 30% faster at 4K, 30% faster at 1440p, just normal without ray tracing, and 4K rasterized with no ray tracing. One thing I'm pretty sure is it's not going to be 30% faster 1080p, just normal rasterized gaming. So we have to dig into that 30%. What does that actually mean? Does it include the boost of the Intel and NVIDIA GPU together? Of course, we know 1080p is a big bottleneck, and we know this in the desktop. You might as well have a 2080 Ti. I mean, I've got a 3090 in here. Really, I should have just stuck with 2080 Ti at 1080p. Like, it makes stuff all difference, really. So now I'm going to go through the reasons why you would want to wait for the 3000 series graphics in GPU, and then why you shouldn't wait or why you would not want to wait. First of all, it's going to be faster. Of course, it's going to be faster, new architecture, whatever. You get the feature of Intel and NVIDIA working together to give you even more of a boost. So even at 1080p, maybe that gives you a bit of a boost there. If you're going to be gaming 1440p, 4K, normal, even if it's just raster, rise 3000 series will make a difference for 1440p and 4k there will be 1440p laptops trust me on this if you're into ray tracing yeah it's going to be much better for ray tracing you know second generation dlss you get all those extra features like improve nvenc encoder so that's going to be better for content creation you know the nvidia voice and all that if you're going to be outputting to an external monitor 4k or 1440p makes sense to wait and these 3000 series gpus do support HDMI 2.1. Now, whether the laptops will implement this or whether they've nerfed it, we don't know, but we should have HDMI 2.1. So they're the sort of reasons you might want to wait. Now, why you might not want to wait is you're going to pick up a good deal on the older models, no doubt. They're going to be super expensive, these new ones. There's a massive bottleneck at 1080p, and I don't think anything here is going to solve it. So I think most of the performance games are going to be ray tracing higher resolutions. If you don't care about RTX and DLSS and all that sort of stuff, and if you have no need for HDMI 2.1, maybe just consider getting one of the older models on a sale. You're going to get a much better deal in 1080p. I don't think there's going to be that much of a difference there. Also, the 1080p monitors, you can have higher refresh. I mean, the 1440p's, I don't expect will have higher refresh as the top tier 1080p monitors. Also, one important thing is, we don't know what's going to happen with AMD, but I do suspect the first laptops that come out with these, you know, 
know, 3000 series NVIDIA GPUs won't have new CPUs. Of course, wait until AMD's keynote to find out when they're going to drop their CPUs, but I don't think it's going to be until the end of the year until we get new CPUs to go along with these new GPUs. And do you want to buy a laptop that is basically the old one with an RTX 3000 shoved in it? Maybe give it a pass until they have the new CPUs in it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. See yes, baby. Tally ho.